God is not telling you, give up everything you have. He's asking you to give yourself to Him. And then do His will. And as you do, guess what? That problem that you've got in your body, it'll get cleared up. Why? Because you'll know that God loves you and didn't do that to you. And you will begin to lay your head down at night and be at peace because you know that you are doing what you were born to do. To succeed in life, we have to fight. That's why winners train spirit, soul, and body. We have to be ready. When the fight starts, all the theories are over. We either have it or we don't. We will get hit, but we get back up. We fight to win. Now, get ready for a tactical tip from Pastor Kurt. I want to talk to you about something very important. It's something called normalcy bias. Uh, in fact, I recommend a book by Steve Tarani called Prefence and uh, The Mind, the Most Powerful Weapon. Normalcy bias is when you begin to believe that everything around you is normal and you can't really see what's happening because your brain has said, this is too terrifying. I don't want to pay attention. The other day I was at a restaurant. I was meeting a friend of mine. This guy stands up behind me and says, I'm going to kill all y'all. When he said that, I immediately began to look. I could see by the looks on the people's faces that people were not, they were not alarmed yet. So I turned around, look, he didn't have anything in his hands. And so I knew I had a few seconds. He leaves me, goes over to the woman, doesn't have anything in his hands, the, the waitress, and threatens her and then goes out, what I believe, to go to his vehicle and get a weapon. It was interesting because I went immediately over to the management and I said, you need to call 911 immediately. And so I was grateful that he'd gone outside. If I was going to confront him, I was going to plan on confronting him outside. But I had to impress upon the management, you need to call 911. And then it was said to me, well, you know, he's a little crazy. He's been in before. That's what's called normalcy bias. You think that this is normal, so nothing bad could truly really be happening. In the days of active killers, when you see something like that, you need to get up and immediately notify 911. Do not let your mind convince you that nothing bad ever happens to you. Immediately react. Immediately do what is necessary to help yourself and your loved ones. Do not engage in normalcy bias. Call 911. Save your life and the lives of multitudes of others in an active killer incident. Hello, I'm Kurt Owen, and welcome back to Fight to Win. We've been talking about knowing and believing the love of God. And I strongly encourage you that you're going to have to listen to these over and over and over again. And so I please go to fighttowin.tv and listen to them over and over again. You, our partners make it possible for you to listen to them absolutely free. I'm also going to recommend to you something. Um, we've got uh, uh, some... The, I think these are going to come to you guys on USB or I think we have another way of uh, getting them to you. But we have a Love of God series that is far more in-depth than what I'm teaching here. Uh, we also have the uh, God, Friend, or Foe series. Um, this is really good, uh, and I'm going to cover some of this, but I'm not going to cover all of this. But this is good to share with people that might believe that God is part of their problem. And we'll, we'll go on about that. And then also, of course, we have our Knowing and Believing the Love of God devotional. By the way, this can be yours absolutely free. Our partners will provide it for you. It's a 31-day devotional that helps you get established in these things. You know, something about knowing and believing the love of God, I'll just tell you, it's something that, um, it's like carrying around a leaky bucket. Because all of society, and the truth of the matter is, is most of religion tries to convince us that God doesn't truly love us the way he loves us. And so uh, we want to put some things into your hands that will help you every day. So get, at least get this free devotional. Um, now, we've been talking about this, and, and again, go back to fighttowin.tv and, and listen to them over and over and over again, in addition to the other materials. Go with me back to uh, 1 John, and we're going to be... In, uh, again, in verse 16, it says, We have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Now, again, there is a difference between knowing and believing the love of God. 
Many people know about the love of God and really can talk to somebody else about the love of God, but don't necessarily believe the love of God for themselves. Okay, And what we're talking about is, is you beginning to believe the love of God for yourself. Okay, Now, um, we started talking about, we, we gave some biblical examples of the difference between knowing something about God and actually believing it. But then we started talking about that it's actually dangerous not to believe God's love for you. And the first thing that we talked about, do you remember what it was? It was false doctrine. That when you do not know and believe the love that God has for you, it opens you up to false doctrine. The second thing that we started talking about was that the will of God, that if you do not know, if you do not know and believe God's love for you, then you are always going to have trouble seeking God for His will because you're afraid of what He's going to tell you. Now again, we're supposed to know the will of God and, and maybe at some point I can, I'll be able to teach about that. But here in Colossians 1.9, and again, remember, especially you partners, this is what we pray over you every day. Colossians 1.9, that we are actually supposed to be filled with the knowledge of the Lord's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now again, unless you know and believe God's love, you're not going to do this. You're, not unless you get desperate out of desperation that you want, you know, some, you're about to die and, you know, you're willing to do anything to live. But I have to be honest, in my own life, when God started talking to me about, even when I knew what His will was, I didn't want to do it because I thought it would be miserable. I thought I would be miserable. In fact, okay, let's just talk about this. For I'm sitting here talking to you. On, on this television camera, right? Years ago, um, when God started dealing with me about uh, going on television, and we were actually on television before. Maybe someday we'll throw some of those broadcasts up on, on the website or stuff and because uh, you would get a laugh out of it. But I hated it. I hated the very idea of it. And when God told me that was His will for my life, I was like, I do not want to do this. I don't like the very idea of it. And to be honest with you, the reason was, was I was thinking about me and what I wanted and what I liked. I, I really, sorry, I, I really wasn't thinking about you at all. I was very self-centered. Um, I mean, I think self-centered is something we all deal with and we'll continue to deal with until Jesus returns. But that's the way I saw it. And I thought, you know, I definitely don't want to do this. But you know, I'm sitting here today. And we're filming these things and I have joy in my heart because God actually knew what would bring me more fulfillment than what I knew. You know, um, let me liken it to this. I, I, you ever heard of a guy named Big Daddy Weave? He's a singer, right? And um, I, uh, I, I love a lot of his music. Uh, most of it is very scriptural and I, and I dig that. I like my music to be scriptural. I don't want to just listen to some bawling and squalling that's unbelief and, and all that. But my wife one day said this. Now my wife, who sometimes, to be honest, seems to know me better than I know me, um, she says, I want to do this song in, in church by a guy named Big Daddy Weave. And I said, we are not doing a song in church by anybody named Big Daddy Weave. Right? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I want to do it. No, no, no. We're not doing that. Will you at least listen to it? Yeah, I'll listen to it. And so I listened to it. And she says, what do you think? I said, I think we're going to do a song in church by a fellow named Big Daddy Wee. Because she knew that. I mean, all I could imagine was if somebody hear the song in church and then there'd be some guy that's got all these weaves in his head, Right? And he's, he's some, you know, some job of the hut looking fella with all these big daddy weaves. And then I'm like, I, I don't think so. And he's not like that at all. I don't know how he got the name, but uh, I, I dig his music. I, I dig, you know. And so my wife knew me better than I knew me. If my wife can do that, don't you believe the Lord can do that about you? Could it be that the very thing you think you'll hate that you'll actually enjoy? You ever, you, do you have any kids? You ever had kids? You know, kids are funny. And then you get the really bullheaded kids like me that you get them to do it 
and they're really having fun, but they don't want to admit it, right? It's like, because if they admit that they're having fun, they're going to have to admit you were right. It's like, well, are you having fun? And they're going, <laughs> aren't you enjoying this? No, I hate it. I, I hate it. But can we keep doing it? <laughs> because you as a parent, you see things that you believe your children will enjoy. God is exactly like that. And you need to understand this about him that because he's in love with you before the foundations of the world, he chose something for your life that would bring you the greatest joy and fulfillment. But you never have to enter into a conversation with him with the fear that, my goodness, I hope he doesn't ask me to do something that I'm absolutely going to hate. Because ultimately, he wants you to enjoy your life. Why? Because he's in love with you. He wants you to be fulfilled in your life. Why? Because he's in love with you. And listen, there have, has God asked me to do some stuff I don't like? Yeah. But I was grateful that he did in the end. I mean, I remember him telling me one time to go up and talk to a guy on the street. And I'm like, I do not want to do this again because I was thinking about myself. And, you know, even though it was uncomfortable for me, I can't tell you that I enjoyed every minute of it. But when I saw that man's heart change towards the Lord, and I, I remember this guy, he walked up, to, he was standing on a street corner, and he looked like he was ready to, you know, eat barbed wire, right, and urinate napalm. I mean, he just looked that way. He, I mean, he just had this look. And um, I said, uh, I wa and the Lord says, you go over to him and talk to him. And I'm like, I don't think so. I wasn't intimidated by him, but I thought, this is a waste of time. This is a lost cause. And I went over to this guy and I said, sir, can I talk to you a minute? And he looks at me like, well, what are you doing here? <laughs> and, uh, and, and again, I wasn't afraid of him. I just thought, oh, you ever have, you know, you're, it's like you're not afraid of the people, but it's just like, I, this, this, I don't want to do this. So I said to him, and I said, and I, and I didn't, at the time, I didn't know what the Lord wanted to say. I said, sir, I just want to talk to you. So the Lord said something in my heart, and I'm like, I have no idea what he's about to say. And then I said, you know, your grandmother's been praying for you, and uh, you've been running and uh, you don't have any, you don't, you don't know what you're supposed to do. And your grandmother, you need to go back to what your grandmother taught you. And this guy began to tear up in his eye. And though I hated the fact that God told me to walk over to this man, I did not like the fact that he wouldn't tell me what I was going to have to say. But then once I said it, and I saw that man's heart become tender. And I saw where the Lord was reaching out to him like that all of a sudden I was grateful that the Lord was willing to use me to do something like that and even though I thought I knew me that I would not enjoy this when the Lord asked me to do it I I I was blessed by it and not only that I didn't just get the blessing of doing it but now I'll have a reward in heaven because I did God's will for my life that's awesome that's awesome but I could have sat there and said, well, you, you're just making me do this because you're my, I'm your science experiment. You're just trying to order me around and, and all this other stuff, always pushing me around and, and all this. And I could have approached it where he, I'm just this thing he makes me want to do. He's not trying to prove he's God. He's trying to take you to the place of the greatest fulfillment for your life. That's what he's trying to do. He's in love with you. And he, his will for your life is better than anything you can imagine. You are not God's science experiment. He has been thinking about you before he formed this planet. He's been thinking about your life and what would bring you the most joy. But you will never, ever put... And, and listen, it's not just about knowing God's love, but it's about you being willing to take the time to find out what God's love is. Because a lot of times people are like, well, yeah, I spent 15 minutes this morning. If you realized that the God of all creation had something better for you than you could ever imagine, you would spend more than 15 minutes looking, finding out what it was, right? Jesus compared it to the pearl of great price, right? If you, okay, if I said, uh, I put $1,000 in your house somewhere, I've hidden it. I guarantee you, you're not going to spend just 15 minutes looking for it. And if you don't find it in 15 minutes, you're quitting. No, because you want it. You want that blessing. You want that reward. So what are you going to do? Man, you are going to take whatever time it takes to do it. 
That's the way you should look at the will of God for your life. And evidently, the Lord just spoke this in my heart, that there's somebody out there that you're worth millions. You're worth millions. So when I say uh, take whatever time for $1,000, you, you, you could lose $1,000 and you wouldn't even miss it. Understand the reason that you are still unfulfilled with all your millions is because you are not certain of what God's will for your life is. That's what you've been missing. And God wants to reach you right where you're at because He's in love with you. God is not trying to take everything from you. That's one of the things that people don't understand about with the rich young ruler. When he, and, and I'm, I'm speaking to everyone, but in particular this person. God is not telling you, give up everything you have. He's asking you to give yourself to Him. And then do His will, and as you do, guess what? That problem that you've got in your body, it'll get cleared up. Why? Because you'll know that God loves you and didn't do that to you. And you will begin to lay your head down at night and be at peace because you know that you are doing what you were born to do. Because with all your millions, you don't know that yet. But this is true of all of us. You know, uh, I don't have millions yet, but I can just tell you that uh, I've been unsatisfied not knowing what God's will for my life was, and honestly, running from it. Running from God's will, because I thought it would take away from me that it wouldn't cause me to gain. And I'm doing God's will for my life today, and I, I believe that I'm gaining in every area of life. I'm more content, more, more joyous than I've ever been. God has done some great things for me. And all of the things that I valued, that I tried to hold on to, are, have either fallen away, and I, I'm, I don't miss them, or I have better than what I had before. Because God is in love with me. But He's not just in love with me, He's in love with you. So, if you want to be filled with the knowledge of the Lord's will, you need to begin to know and believe God's love for you. And that's going to motivate you. Think about it like this. This person who knows everything about you, who is completely and absolutely in love with you, who knows what would bring you the greatest joy and fulfillment, created a plan for your life so that not only could he bless you, but that you could be a blessing and you could lay your head down at night with a smile. And then when your life is over, and you step out of this body, you would have peace and confidence that you are stepping into the realm of Him who is completely in love with you and that you've enjoyed life because you followed after the One who is completely in love with you. In order to truly press in to know God's will for your life, you're going to have to know and believe His love. It's the only way you'll open up yourself to it. Now I want to talk about something else. And this, this is kind of be a twofer. Okay, um, here's another reason. Now remember the dangers of not believing God's love. One, you open yourself up to false doctrine. Two, that you do not uh, want to know God's will for your life because you're afraid of what he's going to tell you. Now let's look at this, uh, another one here. And this is in Genesis. We'll just use this account and I'm going I'm to bring out two different things in it. And uh, this is, we're going to start in verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. Now notice why. Notice this. For God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw, saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and that a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband there with her, and he ate. All right. Third reason you need to know and believe God's love 
If you do not know and believe God's love, you will choose to sin rather than choose to walk in righteousness. Now, how, why do you say that? Because there's a reason people choose sin. Let's take uh, lying. Why do people lie? Because they believe that if, God, if they were to tell the truth, that God does not love them enough to protect them in telling the truth. People say, well, no, that's not, not, that's not true. Uh, I, I lied to my boss to keep my job. Right, because you believe. You do not believe God loves you enough that if you were to tell the truth that you, God is enough to protect your, your job or to give you a better one. You say, well, that, might, that person might be lying for that reason, but I lie to spare people's feelings. That's right. You lie to spare people's feelings about you. You don't really value them. You value how they feel about you. Your wife says or your husband says, do I look fat in this? And you, you're like, I can't say yes because then they will be mad at me. Then they might not like me. Then they might not care about me. Here's the thing you're going to find out. Once you know and believe God's love for you, the opinions of people no longer matter. And the reason you're telling them, no, you don't look fat, is not because they don't look fat. Not, it's not even because you don't want to hurt them. It's because you're afraid of how they'll feel about you after you tell them the truth. But if you actually believed God's love, you would make the decision to be truthful with everybody. And you could just be yourself. But we'll get into that later about how knowing and believing God's love frees you to be you. But the reason, why would you steal? Why would a person steal? Because you don't believe God loves you enough to provide for you whatever it is you just stole. That if you were to trust Him, if you were to honor Him, that God would give you that. And that's exactly what happens here in the garden. Go ahead. God does not want you... We'll talk about this later, about this adversarial relationship with God. But he, what is He telling him? There's this thing you could have, this knowledge of good and evil, and God won't give it to you. So you know what? Go ahead and provide it for yourself. Because God doesn't love you enough to give this to you. God is jealous of you. Again, that gets more into adversarial relationship. I told you this was going to be a twofer. But here's the thing. Why is it? Okay, what about adultery? Do you know why people commit adultery? Because they do not believe God loves them enough to bring them fulfillment in, the mar in their marriage. They don't believe that God loves them enough to bring them that fulfillment even, even sexually. You know, God does want you to have a, a, a sexually fulfilled life. He created sex. It, th there's a reason that we enjoy it. It's not sin to enjoy sex, but it is a sin to, to go after sex outside of the parameters he laid forth. But why do people do that? Why do people go outside their marriage for, for, for fulfillment? Because they don't believe God loves them enough to give them that fulfillment in the marriage. See, if you begin to believe that God loves you, you can look at sin and say, I'm not doing that. Because God loves me enough to provide all of that for me. That I don't have to compromise myself, my integrity, my honor to do this. Because if I have need of it, or even if I want it, God is willing to give it to me because He's in love with me. I do not have to provide it by my own hand. Why, why do people in the workplace, why do you always have to feel the need to promote yourself? Why do you feel the need to, to yield to pride and to promote your, blow your own horn? Well, because if I don't, how am I ever going to get ahead? See, you do not believe that God loves you enough to promote you in humility. See, when you start acting in the flesh, when you start choosing sin, it's because you do not believe that thing you're seeking to obtain, God loves you enough to give it to you. But what if you did believe the love of God? 
What if Eve believed the love of God right here and said, listen, if God didn't give it to me, I don't need it. That if I wanted it and it was available and it wouldn't hurt me, God loves me enough to give it to me. God loves me enough to provide it for me. I do not have to compromise my relationship with Him. I don't have to compromise my relationship with others. God will give this to me because He is in love with me. And if He doesn't want me to have it, it must not be worth having because He's in love with me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Think about why it is the last time you gave into your flesh and sinned. What was your motivation? What were you seeking to obtain? And then realize, God, if it, if it was worth having, God would have given it to you because he's in love with you. Now people say, yeah, but it might have taken a while. You know, here's the thing. Do you know people that pursue, I'm going to use riches as an example. People that pursue riches, the scripture says those that pursue it, it will pierce them through with many sorrows. Funny thing though, it also says this, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. In other words, if you will wait on God, if you will pursue the Lord, you... He will give you everything you could ask or think. He will provide for you abundantly, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things get added to you. Funny thing, though, when you seek God rather than it, it's added to you and you are not pierced through with many sorrows. God, that's why God doesn't want you to do it His way. God wants you to do it His way because He wants you to have a better life than you've ever imagined. That's the reason that we encourage you to get these materials, uh, whether it's uh, the free book, uh, Knowing and Believing the Love of God. By the way, you can also go on Amazon. You can pay for it on there and get it to you. Or this uh, Knowing and Believing the Love of God. This is far more extensive teaching. Or God, Friend, or Foe. You, you need to listen to these things over and over so that you become convinced. I do not have to obtain things by my effort, by my hand, I do not have to compromise myself because God loves me and will freely give it to me. Come back right after these important messages because I want to pray with you. To receive your free gift from Kurt Owen Ministries, visit our website or call us at 1-800-215-0428. Now let me pray with you. I believe this is going to have an effect on your life. So you add your faith with mine right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, there are people out there that have made some mistakes. They have pursued their flesh rather than trusting your love. Lord, I ask you to reveal to them by your spirit, by your word, how much you love to them, how much you want for them, and how much you will do for them. So that, Father, they will not compromise themselves anymore. That when they look in the mirror, they will not despise the person that they see because they know every mistake and everything they've done wrong. But Lord, they will trust you and you will give them a better life than they have ever known. And I thank you, Father, that that life starts today.